Hi there, welcome to a video looking at uh, an exam answer plan for a daily response question that's basically about the economics of digital monopolies. Uh, it's an Edexcel 15 marker. Using the extracts and your own knowledge, assess the view that the dominance of digital businesses such as Google, Facebook and others is harmful to economic welfare. Now, what I'll do is I will post a link to a downloadable version of this PowerPoint and including the uh, including the extracts, uh, which we'll come to in a few seconds. 15 marker, you're looking for two KA points and two evaluation points, nine marks for knowledge analysis and application, three levels of response, maybe a developed diagram, it's nearly always required. Uh, try to write in reasoned arguments, reasoned chains. Six marks for evaluation, again, three levels of response. You just need two separate evaluation points that follow on from the preceding KA point. But as with all 15 markers, there's no need for an introduction and there's no need for a final reason comment. So if you've got a 15 marker as part of your exam assessment for this summer, no need for introductions and final reason comments in a 15 marker. Uh, take a moment as we go through this to press the pause button to maybe have a read through the extracts. I've put together four short extracts. It's quite a bit of text to read, but I did take a few minutes to do that. First extract is from the Chief of the Competition and Markets Authority about uh, their investigations into uh, into digital acquisitions, acquisitions made by the big digital businesses, the platform businesses. Extract two uh, is a report to arguing that Facebook and Google may have too much of a monopoly, a powerful duopoly in fact, in the UK online advertising space. This is where businesses bid to have their products, their goods and services marketed and advertised on Facebook and Google. And the argument is that Facebook and Google have a huge market share. Google has over 90% of search advertising. Facebook has more than 50% of digital display advertising. And is that, uh, is that a, uh, is, does that lead to a loss of economic welfare? Extract three is a threat from the European Union that they may well look to break up some tech companies. It'd be interesting to see how they were trying to do that. So growing hostility for tax avoidance, um, evasions of privacy and, and, and the threat of, of breaking up these companies or at the least putting in some, some pretty su uh, substantial fines up to 10% of global revenue. And extract four, quite a bit of text there, but again, if you want to take a screenshot, please do, about algorithms, computer algorithms, sequences of instructions to perform a computation or solve a problem. Lots of businesses now using algorith algorithmic systems in part to give consumers more individualized services. Uh, but in theory, uh, they could also be used to, to harm consumer welfare, in particular their use of algorithms to drive forward little behavioral biases in people's, people's you know, use of the internet. So four extracts, and then you're asked to build an answer. Basically, the, the, the argument is, actually, let me just include a duplicate in, let's put a duplicate slide in there. So those are the extracts. And let's go back to the question. And here's the question coming up. Here it is. Using the extracts and your own knowledge, assess the view that the dominance of digital businesses, such as Google, Facebook and others, is harmful to welfare. OK, so let me build an answer for you. Uh, we're looking for a four paragraph answer. That's all you need to do. Uh, one argument that businesses such as Google and Facebook damage welfare. By the way, that's quite important here. I'm going to, I'm going to, as we go through this, I'm just going to highlight one or two bits and pieces as we go through. That's basically a nice flagging thing. Just start with a reference to the question. It anchors the answer. Is that they use their dominance in digital advertising uh, to, uh, uh, to harm consumer welfare. Extract two, there we go. There's an application point there. Uh, we're making a reference to the extract saying they have an 80% market share to charge high prices and therefore make large super normal profits. Good use of concepts there. Now, higher prices for advertising increases the costs of firms using social media and search platforms to advertise. And expensive marketing costs might then feed through to higher prices for final consumers, which leads to a loss of consumer surplus. Advertising fees charged by the likes of Facebook and Instagram will be above the marginal cost of display, which leads to a loss of allocative efficiency. Just thinking about that paragraph there, everybody, I've brought in the concept of supernormal profits. I'm just going to highlight these concepts in red for you. I've talked about costs. I've talked about uh, consumer surplus. 
uh, and I've also talked about allocative efficiency. So these firms using their monopoly power to raise price above cost. And of course, what the examiners are looking for uh, is, uh, is to use the concepts that you've been taught. Don't be afraid to bring in these important theoretical ideas, supernormal profit, consumer surplus and allocative efficiency. Now, the second paragraph needs to evaluate the first. A counter argument is, this is a nice phrase to use, by the way, I'll just highlight that one for you again. That's a nice phrase to use as a kind of bridging phrase. A counter argument is, tells the examiner that you're going to be evaluating. And the argument is that hundreds of millions of consumers, search facilities and innovative social media services offered by the likes of Google and Facebook are provided at zero market price. You don't pay for searching on Google. You can maintain your social network on Facebook. Many consumers interact with digital platforms daily. And whilst they might be paying a private cost by supplying some of their data, of course, data is important. The external benefits of being able to connect with friends, search for good deals and things. And maybe small businesses marketing goods and services might improve economic and social welfare. Good, good counter argument. Uh, extract one suggests that digital platforms increase choice in many markets. Get the application mark there and their record on innovation is strong, which leads to improvements in dynamic efficiency. And again, thinking about uh, concepts, I'm just going to highlight some concepts in red for you. If you spare with me, private cost. Uh, external benefits, maybe hinting at externalities, positive externalities from social networks. Um, uh, dynamic efficiency is another concept in there. So the argument is that these, these companies provide people with a pretty cheap way of connecting. And often for many small businesses, of course, they can use Facebook and other, uh, other platforms to grow their own businesses. Which would be good for welfare. Third paragraph, third or four. Uh, a second argument against the market power of these firms. Again, flag your answer nice and clearly right at the start. Really flag these answers. Don't make it clear that this is going to be a second point. OK, because you only need to do two. Uh, is that although they don't use their market power specifically to raise prices like a traditional monopoly, and you can almost visualize, can't you, a monopoly diagram, they harvest personal data that is immensely valuable to them, and they have a record of using tax loopholes to legally avoid paying corporation tax, which is important for governments to fund public services, including things like public and merit goods. Extract 4 tells us that digital platforms use algorithms to move towards hyper-targeting of customers, which is a form of price discrimination. Drip pricing is a way of extracting consumer service from people. In other words, you pay the, you know, the initial prices fairly low, then they add on all the extras. Extracting consumer surplus and exploiting behavioural nudges to increase revenue per customer and increase profits. Powerful digital monopolies are better placed to use their algorithm-driven platforms to price discriminate, which my analysis diagram shows can lead to much higher rates of return. So personal data concept there, tax loopholes, tax avoidance, uh, price discrimination. So in other words, I'm arguing that they can use algorithms uh, to, to make much more intensive hyper use of price discrimination, extracting consumer surplus, increasing, uh, increasing uh, supernormal profits. And you could then, if you wanted to, put a, a diagram in. So the idea of algorithms is a way of, if you like, separating out consumers. This is third degree discrimination. I've drawn here a constant cost of supply. And of course, the, 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 the group of customers with a more price inelastic demand they're going to pay a higher price, so much higher profits on the right-hand side compared to the, to the left-hand side. So the argument is that these digital firms can use algorithms essentially to, to really engage on a vast scale in, in price discrimination, which can, can hit certain customers. In evaluation, a lot of students use this phrase to tell the examiner they're evaluating. It's fine. It's OK. Uh, price discrimination can benefit low-income households who have a lower willingness ability to pay. An example might be people searching for cheaper travel, cheaper hotels, people using digital platforms to find good deals to increase their real purchasing power. There's, a, there's an economic concept. So in other words, yes, firm, oops, what have I done there? Yes, firms can use um, uh, the, the technologies to uh, exploit consumers, but consumers can use the technology to get better prices for things. And concerns over privacy, 
can be addressed by giving people better information about how to protect their information. And many governments around the world are now seeking to make it harder for online companies to avoid tax, including the UK. As Extract 2 mentions, the EU is considering breaking up tech, tech giants or imposing fines if they're found to have broken competition law. So ultimately, of course, the key is to have regulators that have the power and the wherewithal and the political um, sort of authority and willingness to, to address issues if anti-competitive behaviour is, is exposed. So what we're doing here is we're trying to build an answer. Uh, 15 markers, it's probably a little long. I maybe I overwrote this answer a little bit, but uh, in the exam, you essentially have 15, 20 minutes to write the answer. So you don't have to write excessively long paragraphs. But keep in mind the structure. Four paragraphs, KA evaluation, KA evaluation, no need for introductions, no need for final conclusions, but do try to use the extracts and also bring in as best you can economic concepts to help explain. OK, I hope you found that useful. I'm going to be using more of these in the weeks to come as we head towards the, uh, the summer assessments. Take care and see you soon.